Hello everyone, it's Mr. Spinelli. Today I just wanted to talk about a few formulas that you may or may not encounter as you explore summations in calculus or another area of math. So these are formulas that you may or may not have seen. Um, and I'm just going to go through really quickly how you can derive them. Um, so maybe you screenshot this real quick, pause the video. But here we go. So let's first of all talk about a very basic summation. So remember that this symbol here, sigma, means that I need to add all of these things, which in this case I'm adding just one, to itself n times. So I'm going to do 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus a whole bunch of other ones, plus 1 plus 1, and I'm going to end up doing that n times. So that end result, the sum of 1, from i equals 1 to n, that's how we read this, the sum of 1 from i equals 1 to n is simply 1 plus itself n times, which equals n. So we're going to use this concept of summations and derive some of those formulas. Now there's many ways to derive the formula for the sum of the first n integers, so 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to n. You may or may not have read a story about how Gauss did it when he came out of his mother's womb, but I'm going to show you um, a particular way that is helpful in deriving some of the other formulas. So, we've got the sum from i equals 1 to n of i minus 1 squared. Wow, let's make it harder. Let's go ahead and write this out, though. So I'm actually using this to find the formula for the sum of i from 1 to n. And you'll see why I'm writing it this way as we work through a few examples. So if I expand i minus 1, that quantity squared, I get what's on the right. So now what I'm able to do with some algebra, I'm just going to rewrite this equation. So I'm actually going to get this i by itself, essentially, is my goal. So I'm going to do i squared minus i minus 1 squared. So I'm going to sum all of that from 1 to n. And all I've done is I've done this term here. Let's actually do a different color. Oops. So I've taken this term here, i squared. I'm subtracting this term from it, which means that I'm going to move the 2i and the 1 to the other side. So it's going to become 2i minus 1. So this is equal to the sum from i equals 1 to n of 2i minus 1. And you'll notice that my sigmas will get progressively worse and worse. So now, what I want to do is I want to look at the left side. Now, if you're in a class like AP Calc BC, you've seen this thing now and then. Um, this is kind of like a telescoping series. So I'm actually going to plug in a bunch of numbers. So it says that I start at 1, so I've got to do 1 squared minus, well, 1 minus 1 is 0, so I've got 1 squared minus 0 squared. That's my first term, my i equals 1 term. Then I'm going to add what I get when I plug in 2, which will just be 2 squared minus 1 squared, plus 3 squared minus 2 squared. And this will continue forever and ever, amen, all the way up to my n minus 1 and my n term. So I'm going to have n minus 1 squared minus n minus 2 squared, plus n squared minus n minus 1 squared. So if I add all these things up, what you will notice is that as you go along, 0 squared is nothing. And I've got a little mistake here. Some of you probably caught this. That should have said 1 squared right there. So as I move along, the 0 squared is 0. This 1 squared minus this 1 squared is gone. This 2 squared minus this 2 squared is gone. And what you'll notice is that as I go along, the only thing that will remain is that n squared term. Okay? So, what am I left with? So the left side of this equation is just n squared. So I've got n squared equals 
the sum from i equals 1 to n of 2i minus 1. Now, I can rewrite this right side. I can split it up into two separate integral or summations. I can do the sum of i from i equals 1 to n, and I have to double that because that 2 has nothing to do with i, my index over which I'm summing, so I can pull the 2 out, it's a scalar, minus the sum from i equals 1 to n of 1. Well, as we just showed, the sum of 1 from i equals 1 to n is just n. So then I get n squared equals 2 times the sum of i, which is what I'm looking for, and all that minus n. So ultimately what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the n to the other side and divide that result by 2, and I get the famous formula that Gauss discovered the day he was born. I get the sum of i from i equals 1 to n is n squared plus n divided by 2, which if you factor out an n is just n times n plus 1 over 2. Almost seems like magic, but it's not. It's math. I don't know why this isn't circled. All right, so let's use this same strategy to find the sum of i squared. So notice, we ultimately found the sum of i. That's a really cool box. I love my boxes. That's the sum of i. And look at what we started with. We started with the sum of i minus 1, that quantity squared. Well, lo and behold, to derive the next one, we are going to do the sum of i minus 1 cubed. If you're smart, you'll actually do 1 minus i cubed, and it, it, it makes the algebra look a little bit easier in terms of my second step that I'm going to always do. But if I expand this, and I'm going to use the binomial theorem to expand this, I know it's from Pascal's triangle 1, 3, 3, 1. So I've got i cubed minus 3i squared plus 3i minus 1. Now, algebraically, I want to get this i squared term by itself. And I'm going to keep the 3 with it, okay? I don't know why everything's going away when I highlight. Okay, so I want to get that term by itself, which means I'm moving the 3i squared to the left, and I'm moving everything else to the right. So let's see what that looks like. So then I've got the sum of 3i squared. Well, the 3 I can pull out. i got the sum from 1 to n equals. So I'm going to have the sum of a giant mess. I'm going to have the i cubed minus i minus 1 cubed plus 3i minus 1. Okay, that's just algebra, getting things to the correct side. And what you're going to notice is I'm going to do the same strategy with this. I'm actually going to write out the first few terms to see what happens with that. So my left side is going to stay the same. I'm not going to mess with it. So I'm going to have 1 cubed minus 0 cubed plus 2 cubed minus 1 cubed plus dot 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 plus n cubed minus n minus 1 cubed. And what you're going to notice, 0 cubed is boring, it's 0. The 1 cubed cancels with this, the 2 cubed ultimately cancels with this, and I'm left with just an n cubed. Now I still have plus the sum from i equals 1 to n of 3i, but I can pull the 3 out, and I have minus the sum from i equals 1 to n of 1. So ultimately I'm left with 3 times the summation from i equals 1 to n of i squared equals all of this part was ultimately n cubed. So I've got n cubed plus 3 times the sum of i. Well, I just found earlier that the sum of i from i equals 1 to n is simply n squared plus n over 2. And then I've got minus the sum of 1 from 1 to n, which is just n. So I'm going to divide the entire right side by 3. Well, I'm going to actually rewrite the right side first. 
I'm going to make all of it doubled so I can, not doubled. Oh, what happened? Where did we go? Magic. So I'm going to have 2n cubed plus, distribute the 3, 3n squared plus 3n minus 2n. All of this is over 2, so I got a common denominator of 2. Clean that up. Divide it all by the 3 that's out front here. And you end up with, and again, I'll let you verify the algebra, the sum of i squared is equal to 2n cubed plus 3n squared. And then that 3n minus 2n just gives me a single n. That 2 on the in the denominator, when multiplied by the 3, gives me 6. And I get the classic formula. And if I rewrite this by factoring, I get n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6. And this is the classic formula you will see in textbooks or online. I can't seem to get my box. It's not boxing for me. I don't know, that's a good looking box. So now, just if you're curious, if you're still with me, you haven't fallen asleep, I don't know, I think this stuff's pretty interesting. And this one is rather peculiar. So I'm going to use the same setup as before. I want to find the sum from i equals 1 to n of i cubed, but I'm going to start with i minus 1 to the fourth. Now if I expand that, I get i to the fourth, Pascal's triangle, a binomial theorem, whichever way you remember it. I always think of Pascal. He's my buddy. So I got that rewrite it to get it the way I want it to look and I've got the sum from i equals 1 to n of I'm going to group the i to the fourth minus i minus 1 to the fourth plus 6 times the sum from i equals 1 to n of i squared that's this term here I've already used this term and subtracted this term, then I'm ultimately going to do the minus 4i and the plus 1. So now I've got the minus 4 times the summation of i, and then lastly plus the summation of 1. Now I know from all of my work before that if I rewrite all of this, I'm going to end up with just n to the fourth. Okay? And again, all of this is equal to 4 times the summation of i cubed. Now, smart people are going to just write the, sub the sigma without the i equals 1 and n, the indices, because they're going to assume that you know that's all the same throughout. But what I end up with is n to the fourth plus 6. I know the summation of i squared. I just found it earlier. It was 2n cubed plus 3n squared plus n all over 6. That's an unfactored form or expanded form. Then I got minus 4. Summation of i was n squared plus n over 2. And then lastly, the summation of 1 from i equals 1 to n is just n. Now, if you rewrite everything, simplify that left side, you get n to the fourth plus 2n cubed plus 3n squared plus n, because these sixes just simply reduce to 1. The 4 over 2 reduces to 2, so you get minus 2n squared minus 2n, and then lastly plus n. That still equals 4 times the summation of i cubed. Combine like terms, you get n to the fourth plus 2n cubed plus n squared equals 4 times the summation from i equals 1 to n. Lastly, divide by 4, and you're going to get your fantastic formula for the summation of i cubed from 1 to n. And that is n to the fourth plus 2n 
n cubed plus n squared all over 4. Now that simplifies to be n squared times n plus 1 squared over 4, which if you're an astute student with wonderful observation skills, you'll notice that this is equal to the sum of i from i equals 1 to n, that quantity all squared. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed as much as I did making this video. Have a wonderful day.